What's up everybody and thank you for joining me for the fourth episode of the Ultimate Beginner's Guide. I'm Wack4863, but you can call me Wack. Now if you watch my previous guides, you know where we're at in the Exiled Lands, and at this point, you can really take this game in a lot of different directions. That's what I love about Conan Exiles, you can do whatever you want to do at any point in time. For me, I'm going to focus on building in this episode because I think it's important to set that foundation so that you can continue to bring things back to your base and really start to expand on what you're able to do with this game. So let's start by finding a location. And the first thing that I recommend for finding your first location is that it's somewhere near water. You may at some point want to place fish traps and those have to be in natural water. So finding a location that's nice to look at that has natural water around it is a great way to start. Additionally, you want an area that is pretty wide open so that you can expand your base. A lot of the crafting stations are rather large and you're going to need a lot of space to house all the different crafting stations. You're also going to want to make sure that you have a full tool set. So we want to get the stone cleaver crafted as well as the stone skinning knife. This is going to allow you to really choose what resources you are going to get when you are harvesting dead bodies. So if you need more meat, you would use the cleaver. If you need more hide, you would use the skinning knife. Since armor is on the list of things that I want to get started, I'm going to use the skinning knife on this body. I do still get flesh, but I get a lot more hide with the skinning knife. Now I'm going to choose this spot right here. For those of you that are wondering where it is, it's on the line of 3 and 4 and E and F. It's right next to the Shattered Bridge. The reason why I like building here is because there's actually an obelisk right here that we can use to fast travel to once we get later on in our gameplay. Additionally, it's not a far run from going up and getting a lot of iron right up here. It's also not too terrible of a run to go up to Sepamaru right up here once we're a little bit more leveled up. I also really think this area is beautiful and I like building a bridge type base right across this water. So this is where I'm going to set up my first base. And as you are harvesting and just spending time in the game, you are going to be gaining experience for those actions. Additionally, you will gain experience for building as well, so you don't have to worry about slowing down your leveling or anything like that. You will still be gaining experience and leveling up. Now, there are better ways to level up if you're looking to do that quickly. However, I'm not necessarily looking to make this guide the fastest way to level up. Maybe I will do that in a future guide. You guys let me know in the comments section below if that's something you want to see me do. Now, it's likely that you're going to find yourself over encumbered while you're harvesting the resources to build your base. A good thing to do is actually make a set of daggers, even if those aren't going to be the weapons that you normally use. The reason why is because when you are over encumbered, you are slowed. You're also not able to roll because you're over encumbered. You can still jump and climb, but those things aren't really going to help you get around. The daggers will help you get around by doing the light attack, so you can move from one area to another much quicker that way. You can also use the special ability, which is the dash ability, and that's going to allow you to move over a long distance as well while you are over encumbered. But the best thing you could do right now is pick the place where you're going to build and just give yourself some storage so that you can put all the things in there that you are accumulating at this point in time. Now a good way to tell if you have enough resources to build something substantial is to put the resources in your inventory, equip the building hammer, and then look at the building menu to see how many of something you can actually place with the resources that you have in your inventory. So you can see with these resources I could place 28 sandstone foundations, 55 walls, but as I place something like a foundation there, you can see all those numbers are going to reduce. So it's not like you can do a 27 foundations and 53 walls. That's a total if you were to just use those resources for that particular item. 
Now, if you ever make a mistake with your building, you can delete it and then replace it the way that you want to. As long as the building piece has full health, you will be able to pick that back up with the building hammer and just look at your contextual controls to see what that is. Another nice feature that is in the building hammer is the ability to copy a building piece. So again, reference your contextual controls and look at the piece that you want to copy, press the copy button and it will switch to that piece. And that makes it really easy to continue building at a fast pace. Now Conan Exiles requires there to be stability for your building pieces. So if you ever come to a point where you can't place a foundation at the same height, you can place a foundation below it and then place the foundation at the height that you want. Now since the build system is so forgiving, you can start out by building however you like and then if you decide down the road that you want to change that or add to it, it's really easy to just go into the build hammer and say delete a piece, you get all those resources back, change whatever you want, and then place it again. Again, in order to get all the resources back, your building piece does need to be at full health. But if you're on a PvE server, it's likely that you are not losing any HP on your building. Now at this point in time, there's some things that I recommend getting unlocked in your knowledge tab. The first one is going to be the apprentice stair maker right there. And then in the survival tab, you're going to want to do the blacksmith, the carpenter's bench, the iron tools, and the tannery. The last thing that you're going to want to do is the armorer. That way you can start making armor. Now all of these things have associated benches with them. So the armorer's bench, obviously we have the furnace and that opens the blacksmith's bench as well. Carpentry opens the carpenter's bench and then iron tools are going to give you the recipes that are going to show up on the blacksmith's bench. The tannery is for making hide into leather and you also get the tannerer's table along with that. And you'll find all of those in the construction hammer under the crafting stations area. So you can see we have smithing here, which is going to give us the armorer's bench, the blacksmith's bench, and the furnace. And then as well, we have the tanner's table and the tannery. We then have carpentry here, which is going to give us the carpenter's bench. So you really should focus on getting all of those things placed in your base right away. That way you can focus on processing the raw materials into better items and better gear. Now we have hide and bark that we're going to place in the tannery there, and that's going to start making that. On the tanner's bench, there are some options for you to change the hides. You can strip them down or you can place those directly in the tannery. So if I take the reptile hide and I place it in the tannery here, you can see it's going to produce regular leather. But if you need just regular hide, this is also a very good way to make that happen. In the furnace, we're gonna put any ironstone that we've gotten so far and some wood, and that will start smelting down into iron bars. You can start making shape wood at this point in time if you'd like, and that will help you to get to the next level of building materials and some of the better weapons and tools also use shape wood. Anything that you are crafting is adding to the amount of experience that you're gaining. But one of the most important benches you're gonna place right now is going to be the armorer's bench because you want to get out of your coarse clothes and get into armor. Now I have a lot of different armors from DLCs and things that I bought in the Bazaar store or unlocked in the Battle Pass. So the amount of armors that you have may vary from what I have available at this point in time, but you want to find an armor that's going to suit your needs. I actually recommend doing the light armor, just the light gauntlets, the light turban. This setup right here is going to give you additional encumbrance so that you can carry more and that's really going to help you out early game. And you can see it's pretty easy to craft. It's just one light padding and then regular hide. The light padding is just hide and then twine and this is a really easy armor recipe to get started with. 
Now, unfortunately, there's nothing in game to tell you what bonuses the different armors give you. You can see it just tells you an armor value here. It doesn't tell you that it gives you bonus encumbrance. And this is where just learning what things do in game helps. You can also consult the wiki and I'll link that in the description of this video so that you can get over there and research what the different armors do. So getting your base set up and getting your armor put together is key to moving on to what I'm going to tell you to do next in this series. Additionally, if you have tips or questions, leave those in the comment section below. I'll be picking one to highlight for each one of these videos going forward. This week's question comes from Samuel Green on one of the previous Ultimate Beginner Guide videos. They say, how do you see the enemy HP? So there are a couple of settings that affect this. If we go into our settings menu and we go to gameplay, we can turn the nameplates off and that is going to make the health bar and their name disappear. You only see their health bar when they're actually selected as a target, but otherwise there is no health bar. The other option, if we go back into gameplay, we're going to turn that back on and we're going to scroll down to where it says show bar values. We're going to uncheck that and what that's going to do is remove the numbers from the health bars. So you can see my health bar doesn't have any numbers and then the enemy's health bar also doesn't have any numbers. So if you want that setting or that feature on, you just go to gameplay, make sure you have show name plates active and then you also want to have show bar values active just like that and you can see the health bar and you can see the numbers associated with their health and your health don't forget to whack the like button on your way out and let me know in the comment section below what's your favorite place to build I'd like to thank all my YouTube members for their continued support. Y'all are absolute legends. If you were looking for a guide on how to loot absolutely everything, I uploaded a build guide to my channel recently, and you can click the video on the screen to watch that now.